My office is moved to the new area. So, South Soho. Is there anyone who lives in the North Soho? No one? So, it's a South Soho. It's the same building, but the South Side. So, 107. The engineering uh, actually renovated recently. It's actually it's, uh, being renovated. So, it's being renovated. Uh, the, we have uh, several research labs and uh, uh, including the digital, sig digital signal lab and the my research lab and the network lab and so on. So I think the four or five the research lab and as well as the two of the faculty office. So I decided to move to there. So uh, last uh, weekend I moved all the stuff up. Uh, my telephone is not transferred and not officially the moved. So uh, you, when you combine my office, uh, you need to check the first uh, the, my current office, the tech 156, if there is uh, any note, so that you can come to the uh, 107. So, but uh, it will be soon, so finally, the, I think the within two weeks, I will move to the entirely to the uh, new office. It's a little bit far from here, but this uh, new one, we have also the computer lab from next semester. I'd like to use that computer lab for our, any course, uh, my course uh, for the exercise lab, I'd like to use that uh, new the computer lab. It's a nice place. Why don't you come around and let's see. Okay, and I think that you, uh, the, if you had any problem on your midterm exam, you appealed it, but I didn't have a time to check it again, so it will be soon. I will uh, post your the revised score, so if there's any the problem on your the midterm exam, okay? And, uh, okay, so we are going to continue the chapter eight the regarding to the main memory management. So, there are, first we have learned the continuous, the, uh, allocation. The, what is a memory? Memory is nothing but the sequence of the bunch of the address. So as long as we know the address, we can the, store the data. That is the main purpose. That is the reason the, the memory is called the primary storage of your data. And that can be accessed by the CPU processor. So we need to manage the uh, space uh, the, because the memory is not big enough and also expensive. Usually, the uh, size of the memory is uh, much, much less than what we need. Okay, so because of that, we need to carefully manage the to maximize the utilization of the uh, memory space. So first approach is the contiguous the allocation. So we, if we can find the uh, same or the bigger same size or the bigger size of the process virtual memory. So memory, the program is called the virtual, the logical memory. So logical memory, if it's bigger, then if you have the enough, the free space, or the enough free chunk, so you can use that memory space for the uh, logical, the memory space, or the program. The sec second approach is a segmentation. Why don't we group by the meaning, code, routine, or function of the program, so you can divide the logical the space, logical memory, which means the program by the segment, like the main function, main routine, or library, or so the heap area, the something stack area. So you can divide the, your program by the uh, semantic meaning, which is called the segment. So we can load segment by segment, not entire program. So to manage either both of them, both of the uh, entire program or the segment, you need to manage what? the address, starting address of each segment or each program, or M, not or, M, starting and limit. So, so these two, uh, the number should be managed by the operating system, so that will be managed in the memory also, so in your, the CPU processor should know where is that address, so that can be managed by the, the register. So you can have the base register and the limit register using these the two information. You can find the location of the mapping table. Finally, you can access the data. Both of them has the, have the problem of what? Fragmentation issue. The main issue of using the memory is how to maximize the utilization. However, if you have the fragmentation, 
That means you, even though you have the free space, you cannot use it. That is a fragmentation. There are two types of the fragmentation. One is internal, internal another one is external fragmentation. So we can reduce uh, some external fragmentation by using what? Segmentation. Because segmentation is uh, small, much smaller size than the entire program. However, still we have the external fragmentation. If you cannot imagine what is external fragmentation, so why don't you think about the uh, disk compactation, defragmentation of your file system or in all the Windows system. So even though we have the free space, so your file is divided into several pieces and slices and it's a scatter. So it's not only the fragmentation issue, but that causes the performance issues. So it will be slower. It's the same problem. So in the memory management, so how can we address that problem? At the time, we can define the page. So last time, the uh, last week, the Tuesday, I, we have talked about the page. So page is what? It's a fixed size of the data structure in the memory. Okay, so let's say that we have the physical memory. This is a 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 from to the FFFF. So as long as you know the address, you can read the data, you can write the data. Okay? So if we have the enough free space chunk or the whole, so we can upload the program logical memory to the physical memory, then the finally CPU can access the data. But that causes the external fragmentation. So to address that problem, why don't we divide this physical the memory by the same size, a fixed size of the data structure. So let's say that this is a 512 byte. So 512 byte, 512 byte, 512. You can have the n number of number of the this one. So this is called the page. So page is a fixed size of the data structure. That's it. Okay. Then this page size. So uh, so you can have the a number of the pages in the physical memory. Okay. Then. Our goal is to load the program, this is our program, into the memory. Instead of a segment, instead of the entire chunk, so we are going to divide the, this program by the same fixed size of the data structure pages. Okay? So let's say we have the five, zero, one, two, three, four, so five the pages on the program. This is a called logical <coughs> memory. This is the physical memory. So don't be confused. Many of the students are confused. Logical memory is a memory. Like the physical memory. No. Logical memory is your program. It's nothing but it's the same meaning, exactly the same meaning. Logical memory. So we can divide the logical memory by the fixed size of the pages. Then our goal is can we load not segment by segment, not program by program. So but the page by page upload to the memory. Like the zero goes to here, and two goes to here. It doesn't have to be continuous. So as long as you have the three pages, you can upload to the memory. That's it. So this is called the page. Okay. At that time, this one, this logical memory page is called just page. Okay. However, this one is too differentiate from the logical memory. This is called page, page frames. So you can have a number of page frames in your physical memory. Okay. So whenever you read a technical paper or article, so that discuss about the memory management. When you see the page frame, that means it's a physical memory. So our goal is to map this one to. This one, that's it. That is the idea of the page. What is the benefit of the such a approach? We don't need big chunk of the memory. Instead, as long as we have the free pages, then we can upload page by page. That means we can reduce, almost remove the fragmentation. Okay? So we can remove such a fragmentation. So as long as we have the free frame, the, we can, especially external fragmentation. There's no external fragmentation. 
However, still we have internal fragmentation. For example, in worst case, worst case, this is a 512 byte, so it's a total 2,049 byte. So how many pages do you need in this case? One, two, three, four. This is a 2,048, right? Because of one byte, you need one more the pages. So at that time, this is called internal fragmentation. You cannot use the, this area. Is it huge? Or so you can ignore? It looks like the ignore, but the in real the operating system, so that even the internal fragmentation may have some performance issues. So I didn't test, but the, some of the technical paper the, uh, shows the performance degradation of the, such an internal fragmentation. Okay. So, however, so how can we manage such an internal fragmentation? You can change the page size. So some of the operating system uh, has the dynamically change it the, such a page size. For example, some OS use a 512 byte to the 4 megabyte. So depending on the characteristic of your operating system, it can be dynamically changed. What about the smaller size of the pages? Smaller size in case you need fast response. Or the higher multi-degree program. Okay? You can, if you have the smaller size of the pages, you can upload more the program okay, into that. We see why. So for example, we don't need all the pages, just one or two the first page load into the memory. So it will be faster anyway it need the IO. However, in case your the operating system the run mostly batch job or data where housing job or the takes a long time like the uh, billions of transactions you can manage in your uh, not billions of transactions be the petabyte size of the data at the time you need a lot of uh, IOs. So, smaller size, you need much more number of IOs are needed. So, why don't we use the bigger size of the page? Then we can reduce the number of IOs, then better performance. So, batch job or the, uh, the data warehousing job, at the time you need the bigger size. But most of the operating system use 512 by the page size. Then, that is the paging approach. Problem, we need to manage the, this one, okay? When we access, when we access the instruction in the for example here. So, so PC is the, uh, the program counter is pointed this one. Then how does the CPU know this address? Program? It said actually does not point the physical address. Instead, they have the, this one is here. This is the page number three and offset is 100 bytes, something like that. So we should know where this page number three is loaded, which page frame number. So to address that one, we need to manage also mapping table. So called the page table, okay? So page table has the zero, one, two, three, four, and zero is zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is a page frame number. This is a page number. So zero is mapped to the number two. One is mapped to the there is one. One is here. One is zero. And the two is mapped to the length. Okay? 
So we need to manage such a page table. So this is the, uh, the paging approach to uh, manage the main memory. Okay. So this is the example of the paging. So this is a logical memory. What is a logical memory? It's our program. Okay. So our program, in this case, how many pages? We have four pages. Zero, one, two, three. And the, we have the page frame here. This is for what? Pagical memory. Your the memory that you imagine. Then it has actually the 0000, 0, 0, 0, 0 to, to F, the FFF, last address of the, but in case of the paging approach, instead of the address, we are going to use frame number. So for example, page 0 is meant to the here, and 1 here, and 2 here, and so on. Then we, we need to manage the page table for what? CPU does not know the physical address. So instead, they know the logical address, which means relative address. Page number plus offset. As you, you can see, there are two the address we need, the page number plus the offset. Okay, offset means so how far from the beginning of the page to that instruction. Okay, then we can find the uh, physical address. Finally, we can access the data. Where is this page table? First, CPU. When CPU process the instruction, so instruction starts from here. So this page number is a zero, and offset is a zero. Then how can you access the first the instruction? How does the CPU can process? How does the CPU process the first instruction? The so program counter is a zero. Then the how does the CPU know? <coughs> First, the CPU should know where the page table is. Okay, where is it? If you design operating system, where do you put this page table? Register. So, in your register, how big register is? <laughs> Very small, right? RAM. RAM. Memory. Okay, you cannot put the, this one into the hard drive one file system. So definitely you need to use the memory to access. That's the only way to access the data by CPU. So it's definitely in the somewhere in your memory, so including operating system and the page table. Also, CPU should know address of this one and size of the, this one, where? Register. So register has the address of the side and size of, like the, the main memory management that we have seen before. So first, that is the Using register uh, contents the information, the CPU can access the, this one over here, then find the, what is the page frame number. If you know the page frame number, can you know the physical address of the, this one? Yes, because it's a 512 byte time page frame number. Then, for example, in this case, it's a 1. So, plus Offset. Offset is a zero plus a zero. Then 512 byte is the starting of the, uh, the next instruction like that. Okay. So then, if the, there is the instruction, then point to register move, register zero, register one. So register one is associative address. If we have the the address of this one, same thing. Find the page frame number, okay, then calculate page frame number 4, and plus offset is the 100, then it's up to 148, and 148 is something like that. So you can calculate the easily that one. Okay. 
from page is now this one. So there are address format. What information do you need? Page number and page offset. So if you are using the 16-bit processor, so which means it's a 16-bit address. What is the biggest size of the memory address? 2 to the power of 16. That's the maximum. Even though you have the much, much bigger size of the memory, but your CPU cannot use entire. That is the reason the some of the now right now the 64-bit processor is uh, almost big enough. But when I use the 32-bit, it's limited by four, map, four gigabyte. Even though we have the enough the memory, but the the limitation of the physical memory is a four gigabyte because of addressing. So actually, this is like the this one. So in case of 60 bit, it's a total 60. So first part of the bit of the address used for page number, and the other are used for page offset. What about in this case, 501? How many bit do you need? to represent 512. 2 to the power of? 9. So you need 9 bit. OK? Then how many pages can you have? What is the remainder of the this one? It's a total 16 bit, so 9 bit used for the page offset. Okay? Then, how many remainder? 7. So, how many pages can you have? 2 to the power of 7? So, 128 pages frame you can have in the memory. That is the maximum size. Okay? So, this one. Used for first part, used for the page number, and the rest of them will be used for the page size. If you have the bigger size of the page, the like the formula bar, you need more bit of the this one, and less page number. So this is the how to address the pages. Okay, so. This is the implementation of the such a pacing using the hardware like the segmentation or the uh, contiguous approach. So we have the uh, logical address. What is a logical address? So your program. In your program, you, your program also has a page number, the page number and offset. And offset is the same. It's not changing, right? However, physical address will be changed depending on where this page is located. So we need to calculate what we need to find the physical address that matches to the this logical pages. Okay, so where we need to the CPU need to access is in the memory RAM. Okay, then to find the F that is the page frame number. So using the page frame number, we can calculate times the five depending on the page size. The so page size plus D. Then we can you can find the the physical address of the memory and finally access the data. In this implementation, when you design your CPU, so you can the design the this one. So it's a uh, CPU. Then I find it. So there might be no problem, but what will be the bottleneck, weakest point in terms of performance? Which one may cause the bottleneck of the performance? This one? This one? This one need I input and output. You need to read the storage, the pages. So when you have a lot of access to the memory, you need the same number of times of the I to access the pages. So that is the bottleneck of your performance. How can you address the problem? 
in computer architecture always when we have the performance issue, how can you address such a performance issue? Cash. Not the money cash. Okay? If you have money, you can anyway. So cash approach. What is a cash? Temporary? Not only memory, fast media, slow media. Okay? It's a gap. How can you address the gap? You can put in between. Faster than the <coughs> load. So speed. Like a, for example, hard disk drive, the CPU. CPU so fast. This one, very slow. So we need what? Memory. That's the idea. So always we can use the, such a cache is used a lot in our computer system. Okay, always some other example. So idea is the same thing. Why don't we cache this one? Where can you cache the page table? So in, this is a memory, this is a CPU, this is a file system. Definitely we cannot use the cache area of the page table over here. Where? Definitely in between CPU and memory. Some of the CPU has internal cache, like the add to cache. So when you they read the specification of your the CPU. So not only just clock speed, but also it shows the add to cache size. What the CPU cache memory, CPU cache size, four megabyte, eight megabyte, something like that. So you can use the cache area. Also, you can use, you can put, depending on the computer architecture, you can put the something in between media, the between CPU and memory. Okay, so the either ways, depending on your computer architecture, they use the to cache or the some additional the cache the architecture, so you can use. So, for example, idea always uh, the same. When you are using the cache, you can just copy all what is the idea of the cache. Usually, cache size the this one is a much much smaller, like the memory. Memory size of the memory is much smaller than file system, right? This is a petabyte or 100 terabyte, but this one, 700 gigabyte. Also, it's expensive. And same thing, in this L2 cache, it's much, much smaller than the memory size, but it's a fast. The idea is, can we copy all page table to the cache? No, you can't, we cannot do that. Instead, some frequently access the P versus F, the page number and page frame number. Some of them. It's the same thing. Did you hear the 20? Do you know the 2080 rules? In general, 2080 rules. What is the 2080 rules? For example, when I worked for the bank, so we investigate the customer contribution for the profit of the bank. We realize that only top 5% make the profit. All the other 95 customer actually, even lose of the profit, okay? Like the using some the paper or the label. So only top 5% contribute the profit. It's the same thing. And in general, so when you think about your laptop, the, do you access all the files on your laptop? Only less than the 10%. So in general, that's called the 20%. Only 20% of the data access there. Not even frequently. So the other 80% you never access. So think about your, the file on your laptop. After you copy the, your, the portal from your server, have you ever seen? No. So sometimes you're surprised. It's, I never <laughs> the, to take such a photo. Same thing in the page table. Even though we upload the, a huge number of the page frame, but not all page frames are accessed, used. Only 20%. Suppose that 20%. So why don't we keep such a 20% to the memory? It's the same thing in the database. Database, many months I'm teaching the database, 
the, uh, the core source of database usually slower than the file system, operating system, file system. So actually, file system is faster. But how can we access the data very fast? Using memory. So cache. So that is the reason when you are installing the Oracle database or the SQL Server, not the, the practice purpose, but the production system, you are recommended to allocate huge amount of the memory, at least the 4 gigabyte, for example, or the 50% of your physical memory. Why? To read the data, not from your database, but from the memory. So it's the same idea. Why don't we put the, this one into the, the cache? So that is the Uh, implementation is a page table based register. I forgot the name of that. So page uh, table uh, based register, page table length register is a limit. Okay. So using these two information, okay. that is called so translation loop or side buffer. It's called a TLB. That cache. This one is called a Translation. We translate the from page, the logical page number to the physical the page frame number. So translation look aside buffer is a cache area. So using TLB, so we can speed up to uh, the uh, access the memory. Okay. So this one is a very small. You can keep the 64 to the 1024 <coughs> entry. Entry means pair of logical page number and physical page frame number. How many? Only a few of them, not all of them. They can be recited on the add to cache or some additional external the, uh, buffer area in between the memory and the CPU. Then, this TLB is the very high hit ratio. Okay? So, this is uh, uh, the diagram, how the TLB is working. Without TLB from logical address to translate to the physical address, we need to take a look at the page table. This one is actually in the memory. So, using the page uh, the uh, to register information, we can find the uh, location of the page table. However, it takes a time to, to uh, speed up. We are going to cache the, this page uh, information to the uh, TLB. Okay? So TLB resides on the different media in between CPU and the memory. Then it has a page number P and F. So what is the benefit? Why we can speed up using the TLB versus the page table? Using page table, you need to have the I.O. Input that I.O. of the memory and calculation. Okay? Using the page number, we need to calculate the times and add up such like that. Instead, from the fast media, the cache, we can just uh, use the mapping. Okay? Then, if you can find the specific page number, that is called the TLB hit. So TLB, we don't have to access the, this one. Then, going to the uh, the physical address. However, if you cannot find the page number from the TLB, that means it's a TLB miss. In case of TLB miss, you need to access the finally. So, to increase your performance, definitely you need a very high TLB hit ratio, like the almost 99%. That's true. Then, how can we manage such a TLB? There are several algorithms. One of the popular algorithms is LRU algorithm, least recently used algorithm. If that has been used, keep it. If not used, throw it away. So if you miss the brain to the TLB, then not use the page number will be the throw away. That is the, the T, 
complete algorithm. This LRV algorithm is very complex in any kind of the memory management. That need a very high hit ratio. So using that idea, we can the access the data using theory. So we can calculate how much fast. So that is called the effective access time. For example, the our hit ratio is the 80%. So which means that the other 20% is missed. So the 80% we can access to 20 nanosecond to the TLB, so using this one. So 80% or to here, and 20% we need to access the page table that need IO. So in case IO, so what is the, uh, this, uh, 20, the 100 nanosecond, okay? So 20%, 109 nanosecond. The 80% we can the access the data, 20 nanosecond. Then we can find how much we can improve the performance. So that is the benefit of using the TL. Okay, one missing part. Here, actually I explained, but the, skip the, this part. How to calculate? So this part is the logical memory. The, this is our program. This is our PG card memory. It's a real memory. So page frame. So we have the page table. So when we have the so like the I and J. J is the page frame page number zero. One, two, three. So it's a page number two and offset is. What is the page size here? Four byte. Okay, in this case it's a one pages, one pages, one page, one page. So page size is a four. Then what is the offset of J? Zero, one. So offset is one. This is the address of the, this instruction J. Then how can you find the physical address? <coughs> so using this one, two is mapped to one. Page frame number is one. And still the offset is the one. Then we need to calculate one times four. This is a page size plus one. That is a five. So five is here. Then we can find the physical address. Okay. Always page number, page frame number times the page size plus option. That's it. I have used this slide for the final exam in almost every semester. But half of the students cannot. It's just a simple math. If you understand what is the idea of the page and page frame. It's very simple. Even you don't have to calculate one time, not this semester, okay? I'm not going to use it exactly. Accidentally, it's my mistake. I used this slide for the question. Then what is the physical address of the M? What is it? So A, actually. Answer is here. Even you don't have to calculate. Do you understand? If you cannot understand, why the you sign? So, even answer is here. So, the physical, the address. So, it's just a simple, the math. Logical address and logical page number times, and not physical. First, you need to find the match, the map, page, physical page frame number of all of the logical page number. Okay, using page table again times page size plus offset. That's it. I'm going to definitely ask the, this question in the final. Okay? Let's see what is the average score of the, this question. Okay, so that is the pages. Okay, then another issue of the using the page is how can I find the available Page frame. Okay, so to do that, we need to manage the free frames. So which one is the free? So 14, 13, 18, 20, 15 are 
three. So we can use the such a three the page frame. Okay. What if we do not have a free frame here? There's nothing free frame, which means all page frames are allocated. So stop. We need to move out the do you remember the swap operation of the main memory management? What is a swap? Unused or temporarily. It's a used, but to load new program, there is no not enough space. So we need to move out, load out the entire program to the hard disk drive file system. That is a swap in and out. Similarly, this time, page by page. So, if we do not have any free frame, then we need to select one or the several of them as the victim. Victim, victim pages. Okay? That is similar as the page out. Page out for the entire program. This can swap out. It's the entire program. It's a page out. Then it will be free space. Then bring the new one to the this page that is called page in. At that time, this, if you cannot find the page on the page frame, that is called page forward. So this page forward is a very important the indicator to see how much your operating system is fast. One, if you have the page four, page out, and page in it, I number of I. So number of page four are very important to judge your the operating system performance in terms of what? Memory. Okay, so if you take a look at the your the uh, Operating system, each operating system provides such as, let's see the centroids. restart the service. Task manager. I should have checked before I come here. It's a service. This one. So in case you have the same problem, you need to check the service. So in case that this service is a stop, you cannot start your virtual machine. This is a common Okay, so for your You can see, somebody already wrote this one. <laughs> it's a swap in and out. So as you know, is there any swapping right now? No, we do not use the swapping in current operating system. However, the name itself is used. Some of the, uh, the operating system you still use the, such a swap in and out. That means it's a page in and out. How many page in and how many page out, okay? And this is the, uh, Memory information, and this is the number of process running, uh, process, and this is I/O, and this is the CPU information. This is, I think, the, so looks like the VM state. So VM st state is the command, okay, to see overall the performance of the your system. So if we have a lot of page in and out, that means you need more space on the memory, or is something wrong? 
Okay? It's too much job is running, something like that. Okay? If you take a look at the There's no IO state. No MP state. Only VM state here. Okay? So you can see it. Every two seconds it updates. So right now there's no page in and out, but uh, if you if you run the other program, it will be increased. Okay? By the way, what is this one? User sys and ID. It's a CPU time. Do you remember C operating system has the dual mode? One is a kernel mode, another one is a user mode. This user time will be used for user mode. And this one, kernel mode. And I, either is either. Right now it's not running the alarm, so it's almost either. So you can see the how much the busy the your operating system, your CPU is using the this information. The rule of thumb is usually recommend two to one, one three to one. Okay, if your the system is too busy, that doesn't mean it's a good performance. Your system, the time is usually half, one one third of user time because nowadays a lot of the application use the graphical user interface or some other additional calculation, not system call this sir. Okay? But if your program has too many such a thing, it will be higher. So corner does not have enough time to get the CPU. So this is the very good command to see the your operating system performance. What about the Windows? Windows is getting better. So test manager provide very nice view of the, let's see the memory, okay? This is a memory performance. Oops. So total the eight gigabyte, only the 2.5 gigabyte I use it. Here you can see the uh, how to, how the, your memory is located here, and <coughs> in this case, the Windows 10 used the page pool. So we will see what is a page pool later. Okay, so page based on the page pool is uh, I think the, around the 500 megabyte, and the, uh, the others the 122 megabyte. Okay. Then I think that there are options to see some details. For each process, I think. option to see the overall performance of this one, but I cannot find it. So using this one, you can see the performance. Okay, let's continue. So as we have discussed before, memory protection is very important in the memory management. Because as, as if you know the address, you can read and write the data, especially when you write the data on the memory, it will be huge impact. So to protect each page by page here, it's a page by page protection. In case of the contiguous allocation, it's a program by program the, uh, protection. In case of segmentation, it's a segment by segment. In the memory, pro the page, in case of the page, it should be uh, managed by the page by page how for each page we have the additional bit. It's, this is a page table between the logical page number and the physical page frame number. In addition to that, we are going to use the valid invalid bit. So we miss 
It's in the memory. Valid. Invalid. I means it's not in the memory. What happened in case of I? We need to page in. We need to copy the, this page into the page frame. Okay? Then update your page table. So that is the valid embedded. So first you need to see here. Take a look at the, this page table, whether this is valid or not. In case of valid, calculate or find the page frame number. Or if you are using the TLB, so you can uh, the, look up the translation lower side buffer, then finally the locate the address of your the instruction. However, in case of invalid, so you need to copy page in the logical memory to the physical memory. So that is a uh, valid invalid bit. The next one is the uh, shared pages. In the program, when we run the program, the your program file does not include all the instruction that you need. Sometimes you can share, like the think about the uh, Java. Java, when you import the certain library, so do you have the code inside your the object file? No, you can just refer that the of access that object from the memory. So that is called the shared the data, and we can use the page for such a sharing. Okay, it's called the shared page for example. Here, so when we run the same program, okay, so it's the editor ed1, ed2, ed3, and data1. And ed1, ed2, ed3, three pages are the so data pages. So their code are the same. So we don't have to copy all of this into the memory. Instead, they can share the same page. Only the data can be the uh, uploaded to the memory. So they are sharing the ED1, ED2, ED3 that are in the page number 3, page frame number 4, page frame number 6, and the other, the process can share the, such a shared page. That is another benefit of using the pages. So you can use the shared page. And one more thing I didn't mention before. What about the page table? How many page table do you need in the operating system? It depends on number of process. So you, your, because this is a mapping table between logical memory to physical memory, right? Your program and page frame. So your program, if you have the different program, you need different page table, okay? Then, these page table are in the memory. Then, you need to know address of the page table and limit of the page size of the page table. Then, where do you manage such a PBTR are the PBTR, page table, PBTR, right? PTBR. 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 Where is it? It's a register. For each process has the PCB, process control block. In your process control block, you, each PCB has the image copy of register information. So your PTBR will be part of your PCB. Then we can have the page table for each the process. Okay. Then the last thing is, how many pages do you have, page frame? Do you have? If you have the, for example, one gigabyte, one gigabyte, the memory, and you are using, so one gigabyte is the two to the power of one. Ten is, it's a K. Thirteen. Megabyte, 16 gigabyte, right? 2 to the power of 16, correct? 2 to the power of 10 is K, right? And megabyte is a 2 to the power of 3, 2 to the power of 3, so it's a gigabyte. Then, if you are using the 512 byte, that is 2 to the power of 9, 
and how many pages? Two to the power of seven number of page frames. So we have more and more page frames. So it's not easy to manage such a huge number of pages just linearly or the frame based. So there are different ways to manage such a thing. Okay. First one is the hierarchical paging and hash page table and inverted page table. Hierarchical page table. What is a hierarchical page table? We can manage the, this is a page frame. Okay? Your physical memory. Then one to the five hundred. One to five hundred. And the uh, this is in the memory, so it has a number of page frames here, okay, for the page. And this is a number of page frame and number of page frame. Then this one can be indexed by the outer page table. So to find the location of the page table, it takes some time because we have too many. So idea is why don't we make a tree structure like the index in the uh, database. So this is uh, our page table using the, this one we can access and access this. Then, how many address we need? We need in the address format, we need to find our page table information and page table information and the offset. So we need to three number. So first number, page number, and second, page number, then finally offset. So in case of a 32 bit, this is a 32 bit, in case of 32, 12 byte will be used for the first letter. And the 10, next 10 byte will be used for the this letter, and finally 10 byte will be used for page the offset. So this is a two level hierarchical approach. Okay? So this is the address format of the our pages, in addition to the page number, we have the uh, our page table, the number, and our page table, and page table, finally, this is a pages and offset, you can access that. So this is the uh, real implementation of the 32-bit, the page table, address format. Then what about the valid invalid bit? So valid invalid bit can be added not all these the address format used. So for example, in case of the 64 bit, we will see some example of the 64 bit. This is 32 bit. And this is 32 bit. Yes, 64 bit. So on, there are unused part even. 64 bit are big enough. So this unused bit, among the unused bit, we can use the valid invalid bit for each page source. Okay. So that is the two level. And this is the 64 bit. Uh, so in case of 64 bit, we can have the more size of the outer page table, which means we can have the bigger size of the, uh, the virtual link. Unlimited, almost. The, there's no limitation of the size of the memory. You can address that. The next one is using the hash. So hierarchical, we need to manage the level. So in case of the hash page, what is the hash function? What is a hash file? Have you ever used the hash file or hash structure? So what is the hash first? It's a function to simplify the input number to the output. So what is the example of the hash function? Modular. So if you modular by 5, any number can be 1 over 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay? So that is the benefit of the hash. What about the input is a string? Also, 1 of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. You can convert the string into ASCII code. Then, apply modular, 
that one of them. What is the benefit of using the such a hash function? When you have the data, any input data, apply hash function of the input. Then output is the one of this one. Your search area is narrowed down to this the hash key. And data will be stored at this hash key is called the hash bucket. So you can your search area is narrowed down to the hash bucket. In this case it's a 20%. Huge benefit. Without using any other computer, just one time the calculation hash function. Okay? So we can apply the same idea to the to many the page instead of the level of the pages like the tree structure, we can use the, this, the, we can apply the hash function for the each pages, okay? So, we have the hash table, and we have the hash key, and hash for the each hash key as a whole. We have a number of data, that's called the collision. The different value, different input has the same number of keys. That is called a collision. The collision is a general problem of the hash. How can we address? This is one of the way. It's a linked list. We can make a linked list of the same the same hash key, hash value of the pages. Okay? Then we can search next next until we can find so this logical app, logical page number. Okay, then if you find this one, and I will be added to you, <coughs> then finally calculate the physical address. We don't have to linear search. We don't have to the uh, tree search. Okay. So this is uh, using the hash table. The last one is the inverted page table. Inverted page table. Idea of the inverted page table is. How does Google work? Have you ever think about the how does Google work? Google? It's very simple actually. So I used the Yahoo first time 1994. I think it's just after Jerry uh, found the Yahoo. So at the time, I was curious how the Yahoo is working. Then I searched but uh, cannot find. So I, uh, the beast, at the time, the, I visited the University of Hawaii, so which is very popular for the computer science, especially the network, like the ROANET is a kind of the basis of the, our internet service. So what I combined one of the professor in the UH and they ask how Yahoo is working. It's a very simple, just a visit and copy. Visit the next and using the link hyperlink that is uh, the different characteristic of the HTML. HTML include the hypertext. Hypertext is the link. And using that link, visit the new page. Then copy, copy, copy. Then you have a bunch of HTML web page. That's the document. That is the reason nowadays no SQL database is getting popular because our data is not string and number, it's a kind of a document. Anyway, so we have a bunch of documents. The problem, when I search the like the UB. Do we need to visit each and every paper? Every the pages takes a time. So in general, the indexing is keyword and the address. Keyword and address. That is a general. So what if the we have instead of so in the document, database document is a data item. This document has number of keyword. Keyword 1, keyword 2, keyword 3. So this is a general the indexing of the document. But it takes a time to visit each and every document. When you have one of the doc, huge number of documents. When you have a small number of documents, it's OK. OK? Therefore, each document check the web, uh, I have the keyword one. So inverse. Keyword, then document. Our data is inverted. Even though this is a document database, so it can be rearranged by keyword. Keyword, then any document. Document one has this keyword. 
and document 10, document 20. Then when we search the, this keyword, then we turn the, this document. This is an inverted index. So it's an opposite way of the, uh, organizing the data. It's the same idea. So actually, the each page table for process. So why don't we keep the process ID? So we have the, the entire page table that has the process ID and its the page number. So we, when we search the page table first, the, we are going to use the process ID. And for the process ID, we will search for the uh, logical address. Then this one is actually organized by using the page frame number. So like if we have the page frame, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, okay? This is a PID 0, and the page number 1, 0, 2, and 0, 3. So search the PID first. PID, then if that is the 0, then check whether this is a P or the logical address or not. Then we take that, we don't have to calculate again. The address of the, this one, this one is the physical the frame number. Okay, this is organized. The previous one, they are organized by one page number, logical page number. Right, logical page number zero is mapped to the this. Logical page number one is mapped to this. So then we need to calculate the address of this one page using page number, page frame number, and the page size. However, in the inverted page, inverted page at the table is organized by the page frame number. Then we will keep the PID and the logical page number. Then we don't have to calculate the, this one, just uh, using the i, i is the page frame number, okay? This is good for when we uh, manage the all the pages together, okay? Okay, so I'm going to skip the example of this one, so you can check the this then chapter nine. Main memory. So in chapter eight we have talked about the main memory management. There are three different <coughs> ways contiguous, segment, and pages. So right now most of operating systems use the page based approach. Is it enough? Enough? Anyway, physical size of the memory are not changing, right? If you are using the contiguous, the, when you are using the uh, segment, or even page, physical memory is not changing. Anyway, sometimes it's full of the data in the memory, even though you are using the pages. They can reduce the fragmentation, but still, Sometimes it's full of the memory. So how can we address? At the time, we are going to adapt the idea of the virtual memory. Have you ever heard about the virtual memory? Where? You never use? What is a virtual memory? It's virtual memory. It's not physical memory. OK? But most of operating system use a virtual memory. Why don't we check the, our operating system? This is my PC property. So advanced setting. If you go to the performance, performance. So virtual memory. 
So any operating system use the virtual memory. Why? Because the physical memory size is not big enough to address that problem. Why don't we extend the data structure of the memory to the file system? So in other words, we are going to use the file system as a memory. Okay? How? How? We can use the same data structure that we have discussed upon page. So instead of the using the NTFS file system, that's the data structure for file we don't use. Instead, we are going to use the hard disk drive. Secondary storage <coughs> as well. The page by page. Same data structure as the physical memory. That, does it mean the file system can be changed to the memory? No, it's a still hard disk drive file system. It's a very slow input and output. We cannot avoid that. We cannot increase the performance. That's a hardware issue. However, when you are using the file system, we will discuss later after the main memory management. So it's the IO many. Anyway, file, what is the file system? It's a software part of operating system to manage a bunch of files. It's an overhead. Okay? There is another approach to keep the data in the hard disk drive, that is the low device versus file system. File system is a software to access the data on your hard disk drive, like the, this one. It's a sector number, cylinder number, who knows that? Disk controller. So, Using file system, you don't have to worry about the, what is the, uh, the, the sector number, what is the cylinder number, what is the location. This file system and your disk controller can take care of everything. However, that takes a time because it's overhead. You need some the, uh, um, system library using the system. If you don't want to, I can directly manage that. Okay? So low device, as low. Okay? Low device. So you can access, you can store the data, you can read. However, in your application program, you need to implement everything. However, performance is much better. Some of the database systems use the low device for better performance. So similarly, if we allocate the certain area for the memory data structure, which is called the virtual memory, okay, we don't have to have the such an overhead of the file system. Just read directly as a page by page. So we can get the benefit of the performance. So this is the virtual memory in case you do not have enough physical memory size. Okay? It is recommended by rule of thumb as a rule of thumb is a two or three times of the physical memory. However, nowadays, our memory size is getting bigger and bigger. Even when you take a look at my system, what's the usage of the memory? It's just a 40%. Still, I have the enough. At that time, this virtual memory is not used. However, it's automatically. If I run the huge job, like the data analytics program, it needs more memory, like the Perl or the Python program that the import the one terabyte of the data, then definitely memory is not enough. At that time, the virtual memory will be dynamically increased. Nowadays, the operating system uh, manage the dynamically increase the uh, virtual memory. What about the Linux? Linux use virtual memory as name of what? Swap space. The swap is used for the virtual memory. So next time we will discuss about how to use the such a virtual memory. Okay? Any questions? So your the project one is extended to the this week. Please the uh, the work hard and uh, try to uh, complete on time. Okay. Thank you and uh, see you next class.